Thank you very much, uh, moderator, and good morning. Uh, I will present on in-depth epidemiological study of cholera in Zimbabwe, a study of uh, cholera hotspots. This is part of, um, most of most of what I'm going to share with you uh, is also um, appearing in a regional initiative um, by UNICEF. Um, even though uh, this work was stimulated by us uh, at the ministry, just wanting to know how best we can plan and preposition our supplies for cholera in view of a number of outbreaks having been happening in our country. Uh, for purposes of this uh, presentation, the word spot definition was um, defined as a geographically limited area where environmental, cultural, and socioeconomic conditions facilitate transmission of the disease and where cholera persists or reappears regularly. Um, as you will see, this has yet been uh, the occurrence in Zimbabwe um, in recent times. So in terms of the uh, initiative, we sought to get a better understanding of the local dynamics of cholera at a national level. Also apply an approach combining field research findings, epidemiology. We didn't quite go much into the genetic analysis. To identify cholera hotspots as well as high risk populations and practices for targeted emergency response, uh, but also prevention programs, and to establish effective uh, strategies to combat uh, cholera in Zimbabwe and beyond. As I said, uh, we had seen uh, occurrence and recurrence of cholera in recent times in, in Zimbabwe. The first case is having been documented as far back as 1972, but as from 98, we almost saw cholera on an annual basis um, with uh, a very high uh, rate of occurrence in 2008-2009. So when you look at uh, a map of the country, previously we used to associate cholera with uh, a history of contact with us in Zambia or us in Mozambique. Uh, the northeastern part of the country being mostly affected. Um, and those maps just show the occurrence of cholera uh, from 1998 to 2018, which is the most recent outbreak. We've also seen seasonality of cholera occurrence in the country, mostly occurring during the rainy season. We have one rainy season which starts between October, November into March of the following year. So we've seen also cholera occurrence um, happening mostly within the rainy season. So in terms of the methodology for the hotspot mapping, we looked at the epidemiology of cholera, uh, the morbidity and mortality, but we also uh, looked at the geolocation where the cholera cases have, had been reported over time. Also using data, we had uh, a lot of very good data during the big cholera outbreak of 2008 and 9, and in the years following that uh, within the UN OCHA. And we also used our population data from the National Statistical Agency. Uh, as well as the national health profiles, and of course the rainfall data, as I said, we saw a seasonal pattern to cholera occurrence. And in the analysis, uh, there was um, the data cleaning, uh, also um, extrapolating where we could not get uh, data, where there was missing data, but also looking at the patterns of spor sporadic cases um, and defining what an outbreak was for purposes of this um, analysis. Um, and also ensuring that outbreaks were clearly defined from one to the other, defined, deline delineating the time between one outbreak and, and the next, so that we know whether it's two outbreaks or it's the same continuing outbreak. 
but also looking at the key epidemiological features for the outbreak event, the onset of the outbreak, its peak, its duration, the incidence, the case fatality rate, but also the inter-epidemic period, as, I, uh, as I've mentioned. So the hotspot classification was according to recurrence, duration, and intensity of the cholera outbreaks. And interpretation of the results was based on our local context. As I said, part of this work was of a regional nature. So in terms of the hotspot uh, classification, four tires were outlined, starting with the highest priority, where the frequency and percentile of distribution was above 90, then high priority between 70 and 90, medium priority, and then low priority. Also looking at the frequency of the outbreaks, uh, duration in terms of number of weeks that the outbreak was being uh, reported, but also intensity. So that's part of the classification in terms of our regions. We have eight rural provinces in Zimbabwe and three metropolitan provinces, which include Harare. Uh, I think the summarized version will uh, give a bit more um, information. So in terms of the provinces, uh, we have uh, a top uh, five high uh, cholera intensive districts, uh, which include um, Mashingo, Chiredzi. And Chiredzi remained uh, reporting cholera in the aftermath of the big cholera outbreak of 2008-2009. They had outbreaks in 2010, 11, and 12. Um, but also in Manikal and two districts, which currently are in, in a very hot spot because they have also been hit by the cyclone, which is Chipinge and Chimani Mani. So they are in that dark um, area, TA number one. And also uh, Mashona Land Central, in terms of the area that is yes, over the years, the, the maps from 98 to 2018. That, that's one of the districts in that northeastern part of the country bordering us and Mozambique. Um, so in terms of uh, the priority areas, according to that hotspot classification, it gives us 21 hotspots, representing 67.9% of cases. Uh, Harare is included because of its nature. Uh, being the large urban, urban metropolitan, <coughs> but also with a lot of challenges in recent times, but also Buera and Gokwe. Then we have five highest priority hotspots, uh, constituting 15.9% and 13 high priority ones. So in total, the country has 89 uh, districts um, and 21 of them are hotspots. Uh, in terms of the total population, um, it was then put at 13.7 million, even though now the estimates are at 16 million. So in terms of the target population in the 21 hotspots, it's 5.2 million people that are at high risk of cholera. So that just goes, shows a close-up of some of the hotspots. And uh, there have been arguments about Harare, I don't know that there is a pointer here, okay. So that's Harare Eben. And you would think it's 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 a it's a gross underestimate. But in terms of the parameters that were used for this particular hotspot mapping, it was a regional sort of um look. And it was before September twenty eighteen when Harare then erupted in the outbreak that we have just been responding to. But in terms of the other areas, this is Chipinga District and Chimani Mani, which I said are at a particular high risk because of our proximity to Mozambique, even now in the aftermath of a cyclone. The other areas are also part of uh, what have been uh, a challenge in the recent outbreak um, in terms of Chegutu. So you would think they are, they are underestimated, but um, 
it's really the, the methodology that was uh, used perhaps. It still means we, we do have an area that we can concentrate on in terms of the preventive efforts, but also particularly pre-positioning of supplies for outbreak response. Um, so we still get uh, very useful information from this uh, hotspot uh, classification. It, those are just the same places in terms of um, in relation to the rest of the country. So you will see that cholera is a northeastern, but also largely eastern phenomenon all the way down to the south, but not much in terms of the western. And Bulawayo, our, our next biggest metropolitan after Harare is situated in that re region, which is relatively cholera free. This is a close up of the recent uh, cholera occurrence in Harare. But also with um, with spread to areas that are beyond Harare, um, there is Marondera and Shamba. So we, we then had spread to Shamba, which is up there. Um, and Marundera, which is just outside Harare. So in terms of the use of this uh, hotspot mapping um, results, we were able to identify which, which areas are likely to be hit by the cholera outbreak, but also to say uh, which areas remain vulnerable, even though there are areas reporting cholera and they, they are not yet reporting cholera. And um, in terms of the city of Harare, we knew that as the large metropolitan and capital city, once Harare is hit by cholera, the next uh, areas that you know are outside Harare because of the need for people to travel from Harare uh, to Harare and from Harare from time to time. So in terms of targeting the cholera hotspots, it has also allowed us, uh, assisted us largely to uh, increase preparedness and also uh, deploy prevention in high risk areas. Um, recently, we, with uh, deployment of the oral cholera vaccination to Harare in October uh, last year and finishing the second dose um, early April, just two weeks ago, we were then able to target and deploy this vaccine to areas of high risk within Harare and also in two uh, dormitory towns, as it were, Chitunguza and Epworth. And up to now, we have not reported uh, cholera since mid-March in, in, the, in the rest of the country. But the hotspot mapping has also assisted us and given us confidence as a ministry and government in terms of now embarking on the uh, cholera elimination uh, roadmap and strategic plan. And um, we are also riding on some of the um, positive voices within government and within the political arena in terms of modernization of wash, um, wash infrastructure, but also uh, launching of a national cleanup um, that is uh, seen every first Friday of the month being a cleaning Friday since January and successfully up to now. So we, we are now quite confident that um, there is a lot of um, drive towards cholera in elimination in the country. But in terms of us having evidence to say these are the areas that are most needy, we now have uh, quite substantial evidence, even though we might need to continue fine tuning our geo hotspot mapping uh, from time to time and also adding parameters. So I think this forum uh, really um, makes me very confident that um, we can actually beat cholera in, in my country and in other countries. And uh, thank you very much for this opportunity. Mm -hmm.